Hi everyone, I'm Javi and in this video I will show you how to use Mixamo animations with your character devices just so you can do cinematics like this one. It's very easy to do, so without further ado, let me show you how to do it. Alright, so before we jump into UEFN, let me show you Mixamo. Mixamo is a huge library of free animations that you can just download and use in your projects. The only thing that you need to have is an Adobe account, which is free to create. And over here you will have over 3000, I believe, animations you can click any of these animations so you can preview the animation over here and you can search for whatever you want for example here I searched for dance and I get many different dances and all of these animations can be used inside of UEFN with the character device so let me show you how you can do that the first thing we're going to be doing is over here let's search for T pose click on this animation right here and press download over here you're going to select with skin this is the only animation that we're going to be downloading with skin keep that in mind i will explain better later but over here we'll choose with skin press download and just save your animations in a folder that you can find easily later click save and now let's go to uefn so i'm going to create a new folder called animations inside this folder I'm going to create another folder called Mixamo animations now I'm going to go inside of this folder and over here I'm going to drag and drop the typos animation that we just downloaded so let's just drag and drop and over here I'm going to press reset to default you should have everything like this over here where it says import animations I'm going to click here so it's true and press import you're going to see this message but don't worry about it it's nothing just click close and now we have our typos animation but most importantly our typos skeletal mesh or the skeletal mesh from Mixamo in general now I'm going to download the animations that I want for my cinematic so what I have in mind is just this character running the character trips over and then stands up so that would be three different animations, right? A running animation, a falling over animation, and a standing up animation. So let's look for those inside of Mixamo. So over here, I'm going to look for standard run. I'm going to click here just so we can preview it. I'm going to click here where it says in place just so the animation, well, runs in place. I'm going to click download and over here, I'm going to select without skin. From now on, all of the animations that we download are going to be without skin. So now we press download and we save the animation in the same folder. Now let's look for a fall animation. I'm going to use this one because it looks like the character is like tripping over, right? I'm going to press download, check for without skin, download again, save. And now I'm going to look for a standing up animation. So I think this one, this one looks pretty good. This is exactly what I want. So download without skin, download and save. If you want to follow along exactly what I will be doing in this tutorial, then you can download the same animations, but the process that I will be showing you will be the same with any kind of Mixamo animation that you download for your project. So let's go back here to UEFN inside of our Mixamo animations folder. I'm going to go back where I have my animations. I'm going to select the animations and now I'm going to drag and drop them inside of the Mixamo animations folder. Over here, you need to make sure that here, where it says skeleton, you have typos skeleton selected. This is the skeleton of the Mixamo animation that we already downloaded. So this is saying this animations that we just imported will be using that same skeleton. This is very important. If you don't have it selected, then you can just click here to a drop down menu and look for the skeleton and select it uh, yourself. But it should be already there. Make sure everything looks okay and then click on import all let's just wait for the animations to import and now you see that these animations are using the same skeletal mesh that we already downloaded before now let's go here to the fortnite folder and look for a character device over here let's pick this character device and drop it around here and over here where it says character you can select over 800 different characters, I believe, that we have here in UEFN. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Fortnite favorite, uh, 
fish stick, of course. I'm going to go back to my project folder. Let me close this. And I'm going to create a new folder called cinematics. Over here, I'm going to create a new level sequence. Let's call this LS Mixamo. I'm going to open the level sequence. And over here in our new level sequence, I'm going to drag and drop the character device. If we go here to the plus icon to add a track, and we go to animation, you see that we have no results. There are no animations that I can use with this character device. And that's because the animations that we imported from Mixamo use the skeleton from Mixamo. But the skeleton that the character device uses is a different one. So what we need to do is take the Mixamo animations and retarget them to be used with the character device skeleton. Let me show you how to easily retarget from Mixamo. So let's go to the content browser. Let's go back to our Mixamo animations folder. Select um, any animation. Let's say this standing up animation. Right click, go to retarget animations. And over here, you will see that we have as a source skeletal mesh, we have our TPOS skeletal mesh. And what we want is to take that source skeletal mesh and retarget it to the skeletal mesh of the character device. So over here where it says target skeletal mesh, we're going to open this drop down menu and look for M medium base. Click over here, the rest just leave it like that. And over here, we can select the animations that we want to retarget. In our case will be the fall flat, standard run and standing up animations. You can use the control key to select different animations at the same time. So once you have your animation selected, you can go here to export animations. And over here in our animations folder, I'm going to create a new folder. So right click on animations, new folder, and I'm going to call this folder retargeted animations. I'm going to click on this new folder. So all of the retargeted animations get saved there. And over here, we can choose a prefix or a suffix that we want for our retargeted animations. In my case, I like to put RT underscore. So all of our retargeted animations will start with that prefix. Now let's click export these settings, leave those like that, export again. And when it ends, it will automatically open our retargeted animations folder. So now we have these three animations retargeted for the character device. So let's go back to sequencer here on character device, click on track, animation, and now we see that we have these animations that we can use now with our character device. So let's start with the standard run animation. And as you can see, the animation is working pretty good with our character device. You can drag the animation so it's longer and it will loop indefinitely. Every time you see this um, line, it means the animation is starting all over again. Let me make this level sequence a little bit longer. And now let's zoom in again. So for my animation, I want my character to start running. And in my case, I want the character to run down the road. So over here, I'm going to kind of like move it in around just so when it runs, it runs down the road. But as you can see, of course, our character is running in place. So what we need to do is animate the position of the character. So over here on the character mannequin, I'm going to choose track and add a transform track. Let's go back to the start and over here we will select our first keyframe here on location. So let me open location here real quick. Uh, I'm going to put these keyframes as linear and what I want is for my character to move a little bit down the road, right? So I'm going to move here and the Y property, I think, yes, I'm going to animate it. So our character goes forward. Let's move it a little bit more over here and let's see how it looks. So if we press play, it looks good, I think. So let's say, for example, that I put my keyframe way forward. So the time from point A to point B is longer. It will look something like this. So it looks like our character is kind of like drifting. And if we put it over here, just like closer to each other, the character can look like it's sliding. So what you need to do is just adjust until you feel the keyframes look good. Uh, as you see, for example, if we look at the feet of our character, we can see that it works, right? So I think that for the start, this looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to shorten the animation to this keyframe right here. And now we will be adding the other animation. So I want my character to run and then it trips and falls over. So now we can go here to animation, click on animation and add the fall flat animation. I'm going to put it here, the end of the other one. And now let's see how it looks. So the character is running and then it trips. So over here, as you see, when our character changes from one animation, oh, sorry, when it changes from one animation to another, so let's see here, you see that it kind of like changes the feet. So what we need to do is adjust it so the end of one animation pairs well with the next one. So what I'm going to do is just put this over here and just put this a little bit longer. So over here, for example, I see that this animation starts with the right foot. So over here, I want my character to have the foot in place. So let's see over there. I think it's pretty good. Let's put it here. Let's move the keyframe right here. Let's see how it looks now. I think it still looks good. Let's go back to here, put the animation and now let's see how it looks. So it looks way better, right? It looks like it goes from this animation to this animation way smoother. Another thing you can do to blend two animations together is that you can just go right here and you can drag one animation on top of the other just a bit. And that will help smooth things up a little bit. It will help you blend one animation with another. So I'm going to move my keyframe around here. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So now after our character falls, we want them to stand up. So let's just go over here, press on animation and add the standing up animation. Let's put the animations together. And now let's see how it looks. As you can see, it, when it changes from the fall flat animation to the standing up animation, it looks like if it's teleporting because this animation is started where the root of our character is, but this one, our character ends further from the origin position, right? So what we can do in order to pair these two animations together is the following. Over here, where we have our standing up animation, we're going to right click, go to match with this bone in previous clip. And now we can choose which bone we want this animation to match in relation to our previous clip. So in our case, I think the spine would work very well. So let's click on spine. And now let's see how it looks. All right, perfect. It looks very, very good. But now we have the same issue we had before, right? So when it goes from one animation to another, it changes positions drastically. So we can just do as we did before and drag this animation so we can blend those two animations together. Now let's see how it looks. Okay, it looks way better. Let's do it. Let's blend them a little bit more. Yes, perfect. I think it looks great. Now this animation, for example, we see that the character is standing up. But for me, the character is standing up very, very slowly. I would like that animation to be faster. So if we want to modify the speed of an animation, we can right click in the animation, go to properties. And here where it says play rate, we can modify it. So let's go to 1.7 press enter. Now let's go back and now let's see how it looks. All right, perfect. Now let's see how the whole animation looks. So our character starts here. It runs down the road over here, it trips, and then it stands up. Perfect. You just learned how to use Mixamo animations with your character devices. Now what you can do is just add a camera, maybe add another character device and make your cinematic.
you want to learn more about how to make cinematics with UEFN, remember you have a bunch of other tutorials in this channel. If you like this video, then a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. And if you like this type of content, then you can subscribe to this channel. I will be uploading many more tutorials very soon. If you have suggestions for more tutorials, you can leave those in the comment section below. I will be reading all of the comments. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. Bye bye.